Denial kills you twice. It kills you once, at your moment of truth when you are not physically prepared. You didn't bring your gun. You didn't train. Your only defense was wishful thinking. Hope is not a strategy. Denial kills you a second time because even if you do physically survive, you are psychologically shattered by fear, helplessness, horror, and shame at your moment of truth. In today's video, we're going to discuss some things to consider regarding bartering ammo should SHTF happen, and we'll jump right into that right after the channel intro. ultimately responsible for protecting yourself and your own survival. Make sure to live your life with honor and integrity. Never take joy in another person's misfortunes. Always be the wolf hunter. Don't be the sheep and never be the wolf. I try to keep my videos as short as possible by sticking with the main subject of the video. So it's difficult to bring up a different subject and discuss it and still keep the video in a reasonable time length. A good example would be the video I did that was entitled, How Much Ammo to Stockpile for SHTF, which gave some examples on how to try to figure up how much ammo one may want to have on hand should SHTF happen. And in that video, I also discussed that after you get your base amount, number of rounds, that it would still be smart to purchase more ammo for training and possible bartering. Now to keep the original video somewhat short and to remain to the video's original subject, subject I didn't get too deep into the bartering part of it. Because if I had allowed myself to begin talking about considerations of bartering, then I risked my video going from a reasonable amount of time to a longer time which has a tendency to keep people from watching the video in the first place. Anyways, this video is to touch on the possible bartering of ammo that you've stockpiled and just some considerations to take if you have considered using ammo as a possible barter item during SHTF. For myself, personally, I would be really apprehensive about trading or bartering ammo with most people. I think the big thing to remember about bartering any item is that it will be common knowledge that people will barter items that they will not need, either because an item will have no use to them or because they already have enough of that item. So if a person is bartering ammo, then that could possibly advertise that they have plenty of ammo on hand, and with plenty of ammo usually also means plenty of firearms. So this could inadvertently make you a target by inadvertently advertising that you have an excess of ammunition, especially if you're bartering a common round. I would also, I would also, I also would probably not barter any ammunition with somebody that I don't know. I wouldn't. I would probably only barter items with somebody within my retreat group or community. Now, if you watched any of my other videos, I repeatedly, repeatedly say that I don't subscribe to the Mad Max SHTF scenarios. But I have a real concern that we could have an economic collapse caused by numerous possible factors. And I believe that if we ever suffer a massive economic meltdown or another Great Depression, that open marketplaces for bartering in a central location will pop up uh, within walking distances of many populated areas. Simply put, when a country's currency becomes worthless or the economy, economy, economy becomes so overinflated, people will start trading goods instead of using money. They'll bypass the hassle of the government's currency issues so that they can survive. <clears throat> Think of the old markets during the medieval times when the poor peasants usually didn't have actual currency to pay for items. A peasant would then bring his extra livestock or whatever to this open market and exchange his extra livestock to someone else who had extra medicine or who had extra vegetables or what have you. Or think of the modern day flea market, but instead of you exchanging money for that seller's goods, you'd be exchanging a good that they need for whatever that they had that you needed. Anyways, to cut to the chase, I think that open marketplaces like this will be watched by predators. 
Going back to the fact that people will generally exchange items that they have extra of, I think predators will be watching to see what people are bringing to barter because this will advertise what they have back at their homes. And I think predators or marauders may use these open marketplaces to select their next targets. Another big thing to consider about bartering ammo is that you may not want to barter ammo or anything or anything else that could possibly be used against you down the road. You'd hate to supply your future murderer with the capability of the or the means in which to kill you and or your family. Also, with so many variables about, variables about a collapse of the society as we know it, if this were to happen we have no way of knowing how long it would last before things got back to normal if they even ever do again. So would it even be beneficial to barter something that you may never get that may that may never get put back into production again? I mean even if factories started opening up again, will the government have stripped us of so many rights that ammunition companies and anything else to do with firearms be outlawed? So we need to consider, unless you have the ways to make ammo from total scratch, would you want to risk bartering something that you may have no way to reproduce down the road? Now I haven't learned much about reloading yet. That's, a, that's another very valuable prepping skill that's on my list to learn. I've been building up and learning other preps first and I will get to that skill down the road when the time is right. So you good people that know how to reload, please comment below for the rest of us to learn from your knowledge and experience. But even if you know how to reload, spent brass can usually only be reloaded so many times before it starts cracking and becomes unusable, correct? And what are some special considerations on primers? Would there be any way to replenish them once your stockpile of primers was used up? I ask these questions because I think, now I'm not certain, but I think that even if you have reloading capabilities, then unless you have a way to produce shells and primers and everything else needed for ammo production, that while being able to reload may greatly extend your ammo supply, that without having the capability of producing the, the materials needed to reload, that even reloaders could run out of ammo and not have a way to replenish their supplies. So reloaders, please comment below and share your knowledge and experience with the rest of us and let us know if this is a valid concern or not. Another consideration on training ammo is, just like regular firearms and other forms of self-defense training, that, 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 that type of training should be done prior to SHTF, it will probably be beneficial to, do, uh, to, to still do it after SHTF. So would you want to be trading something that you may need in order to train with? When I first became a police officer, I was required to receive firearms training and physical combatives training in the police academy. And my state still requires me to continue to receive yearly training in these subjects. Or my certification gets revoked. And there's good reason for that. To retain any kind of proficiency in these subjects, a person usually needs regular training to develop motor muscle memory because the short bursts of an intense action that these life or death situations have a tendency uh, to be so short that you don't really learn from them. Now, <clears throat> training after SHTF and noise discipline will be a whole different topic that will be discussed in a whole different video. But I just wanted to touch briefly on training after SHTF. For me, personally, I would probably only trade ammunition with somebody else in my retreat group or with somebody that I knew really, and I mean really, well. Somebody that either already knows my ammunition supply or somebody that I know that the chances of them turning against me would be slim to none. Plus, by trading with someone in your retreat group, that will benefit the both of you. While the ammo may not be used for you, for defense or, or, or training, at least it will probably be used for defense or training by someone who should be taking part of the defense of your retreat group. So while the traded ammo will directly benefit the person you traded it with, it will also indirectly benefit you. 
Now, if it comes down to an exigent circumstance that you either have to trade ammo for food or die before the winter is over, then obviously you will have to do what you have to do in order to make it through that crisis so that you at least live long enough to try to make your situation better. But now, to, uh, to recap this video on some considerations regarding bartering ammunition during SHTF. First, bartering ammo may inadvertently advertise that you have more ammo that could make you a target. Also, open markets will probably pop up during SHTF, and predators and marauders may use these open markets to scout for their next victims. You probably, want, uh, probably only want to barter ammo with somebody that you almost certainly know won't use it, uh, use it against you down the road. And should SHTF happen, there's no guarantee that ammo will ever be made again, so bartering away something that you may possibly never be able to regain again should be thoroughly thought about before doing so. And last, training will probably still need to be done after SHTF. So you don't want to barter a training supply away unless you're forced to do so. Obviously, this isn't a comprehensive list on, bar on ammo bartering. These have just been my long-time concerns regarding the subject. So this is where you come in. So please comment below on your thoughts on bartering ammo should SHTF happen. And I encourage you to engage in meaningful and respectable and constructive dialogue with each other so that we all learn from each other on this channel. Just please remember, if any outsiders start making nasty comments, I don't like using the, the, the delete button, but I will for any comments that are done just in rudeness or hatefulness. Folks, if you found this video to be informative, then please click the like button. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel as I plan on making many more videos down the road as time permits. Anyways, folks, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.